Good morning there, Natural Grandma. Good morning, Papa Hank. We are enjoying setting out of the wind back into the trees mm -hmm. and uh, watching the cows come home mm -hmm. to the water tank. It's right over here. We have underground pipeline that runs all the way from the main house almost a mile up here to this last 80 acres on the east end and we got wheat and rye planted in this and uh, makes a good cover crop and winter grazing and so we have a portable water tank up here for them to drink out of Coming down off the ridge there, they were all bedded down and very relaxed. So, is that a beautiful sight, Natural Grandma? Mm -hmm. I love my cows. Our animals are. Red Angus base, but uh, it's a Charlotte bull use, so we have several white ones in here that are half Red Angus. There's a bottom feed float valve that fast recovers there. That's a 100 gallon Rubbermaid tank. Uh, the water outlet is across this where these trees are. We've got a 100 foot hose on it. We've got it set where it only is holding about 50 gallon of water, but it recovers very fast. So. That way we don't have to worry about it overflowing, which was a problem that we had all late, year last year. Yeah, with those cheaper floats, it just aren't very accurate. But here it is, December. That's your grandma. And we are still feeding our animals totally on forage that they harvest. No production cost in forage, no cost for putting the bales up because the cattle are harvesting it themselves. Charlay is a two-year-old. She has a baby calf on her. Now these are little... Well, that's a grass-finished heifer there, 123. She's just about ready for harvest. Now these two, well, the one on the right, the one on the left is the south pole. The one on the right is yearlings being ready next week to be exposed to bulls. They'll have babies next September. I think they have discovered where we're at, Natural Grandma. Yeah, they got to come check us out. We're not. We're sitting in a camoed Kubota, but somehow they've seen us. <laughs> More of them coming down the hill to get a drink. They'll do this a couple, three times a day why your water source when you got cattle on forage should always be close this one is it's 13 to 1500 feet that they're having to walk back which is about twice too far it's better to be around six or eight hundred feet to water but it's the best we can do and and it's fall so it's not real hot so we try to make our animals life very good They've got some really nice hair coats, Natural Grandma. Oh, they do. It's all kind of scary, some of them. Uh, between them and the cats, they've got on such thick coats this year that I'm worried that even though this is December and it's so nice, that we got a really cold spell coming. It's supposed to be 36 tonight. You know, I think the last time we videoed these cattle, Sojourner's sister was in the video, and there she is again. 
222. Hi, Missy. It's the one behind there. Sojourner has the privilege of being the first baby calf born after natural grandma acquired her first cows. Most of them had those little white charlets on them when she bought them. And Sojourner is a white one, but she wasn't born yet. Oh, look at the chunk there coming. A little, little fall heifer. She is, she is short. That is 206. Yeah, her mom is a little, a little lower to the ground too. Mm -hmm. Grass genetics needs to be a, a little smaller if you're going to be able to make them survive out here and feed themselves. So, Well, we just uh, took a little break from all the chicken care, the red hens, and come and check the red cows. And So we just uh, wanted to say hello from Natural Grandma. And hope that you'll check out our, our new website that's been worked on so hard. And You'll come join us in our adventures. Mm -hmm. So, as Natural Grandma always says, We hope you're having this good a day. Thank you from Natural Grandma.